Welcome to Auto Level Tutorial. Everything you see here is a procedural generation using Auto Level, and what you see is a demo level generated in minutes using this package. Everything you see here is included, and this is going to be the first part of the tutorial, and I will go through on how to generate a level and how to configure the generation process in this part. In the next part, we will talk about how you can configure your own art to work with auto level. First, let's talk briefly about the repo. Let me drag one to the scene. So, what is the block repo? As you guessed, it's a collection of the pieces forming the level. What auto level does is placing these pieces while maintaining these connections and keep in mind that the generation could fail if there is no way to maintain these connections. Every piece will have a block asset component attached to it. From there, we can assign the weight and the groups. For example, this piece belongs to the decoration and the floor group. You can also assign it to another group as well. You can create your own group by selecting the repo. Now let's create the level. First, we create a level builder by right clicking, then selecting auto level builder. The level builder will require a block repo to work. Let's connect it to a repo. Then we click rebuild all. And as you can see, it didn't give us a meaningful result, but we can get a better result if we constrain the builder using the block groups. But first, Let's adjust the building mounts by clicking the level button in the inspector. In the scene view, we can use the move scale to modify it or we can use the inspector. In this case, I will use the inspector to set the size to 10, 3, 10. We will get back to why I set the height to 3 later. Auto level has three built in groups they are empty group, solid group, and base group. The base group is a default group. So if you don't specify a group for your block, it will be set to base group by default. We use empty and sort groups to define the playable area. We will get back to that. One of the options we can use to constrain the builder is by specifying the boundary by selecting the boundary settings from the inspector. You can set the boundary for each side individually. Now, let's set all the boundaries to solid and that will ensure an enclosed level. Now I'm going to hit rebuild. Okay. Back to the reason why I set the level height to, th to 3. It's because, as you can see, I configure my walls to be 3 cells in height. I will explain how that works in my next tutorial. Now, let's use constraints to define rooms by clicking on the selection button. This will allow us to edit the selection box instead of the level bounds. And I will press the letter T to edit the bounds from the scene view. I will select this area and set its groups to be empty. Now we hit rebuild and here as you can see we have a big room now. We can also constrain by overriding the weights of each group by going to the group settings. For example, we can override the decoration group and when you hit rebuild we will have less decoration on the floor. We can also rebuild a specific area by moving the selection bound to that area and then hit rebuild selection. Auto level will maintain all the other constraints while rebuilding the selection.
I want to point out something important. If we set on a cell to be empty and the other to be solid next to each other and try to rebuild, the build will fail. Let's check this example quick. The solid and the empty group are not allowed to be connected. The solid will always face the back of the wall or floor while the empty will face the front. This also applies to the boundaries. For example, if we try to set a cell next to the boundaries to be empty, the build will fail since the boundaries are considered to be solid. Okay, now let's try to connect two builders together. I will create a new builder. We do that the same way we did the first one. We right click the empty space on the left and we choose auto level build. And then we drag the repo into it. I'm going to position it on the right side of the uh, first builder and I will set the height to 3 just like this, the other one and we set all the boundaries to solid except the left side we hit rebuild the left side is now opened and ready to be connected. Now we set the right side builder to the new builder. Say that I don't want to rebuild all of the builder, I just want to rebuild a local area. So we set our selection to the connection in between the builders and we give it a little bit of padding then we hit rebuild Now the two builders are connected as one We can also undo for any operation on the level And finally, we can export the mesh by hitting the export button from the builder inspector. The extension is FBX, so you can further edit the level in your 3D editing software as you like. We can generate the light map UV for example. We can also export all the builders together from the auto level menu. But you need each builder to have a unique name. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next tutorial.